Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to part two of this gyro flow video series that I'm doing. There has been an all new release, uh, version 1.0.0, and man, this software is great. Uh, in the first part of this, we talked about stabilizing your GoPro footage as a replacement for a real steady go. And in this video, we're gonna talk about using your flight controller gyro data to stabilize your DVR footage. Okay, so what is gyro flow? It's an advanced open source gyro assisted video stabilization for cinematography, drone video, and much more. Gyroflow has been around since 2020, but the all new version is so much easier to use and it's not fiddly. It's really awesome. Right out of the box, you install it, you can start using it right now. This software is packed with a ton of features. It has more features than Real Steady Go and it works with almost any camera and gyro combination. So you can use it with your cinema camera. You could use it with your GoPro. You can use it with a run cam. You can use it with your Sony camera. You can use it with almost anything that has gyro data or you can add gyro data and match it with any camera. So like I said, this is a multi-part video series and in this video we're going to explore stabilizing your DVR footage right off of your drone. So no action camera or anything like that. We are just gonna stabilize the footage that we have right off of our goggles. I've tried using gyro flow before and I just found it really cumbersome and I really didn't have a need to stabilize DVR footage and I was using Real Steady Go for my GoPro footage. But now that this new release is out, I think this is really gonna be a great option for a lot of people to stabilize their DVR or their action camera or their cinema camera or whatever it may be. So let's dive in and take a look at what it takes to uh, stabilize this footage. Okay, so now that we've completed our flight, what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab the SD card out of our goggles and grab the flight video that we completed. And I've created a new folder here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drag this over into the folder. And this is straight from the drone, just kind of a rough flight. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and plug in the drone and get connected, and we're gonna check out our black box data. Now, I did go ahead and erase the flash memory before this flight, so there's only two flights on here. Uh, I know which one it is, it should be the second one. So we're gonna go ahead and activate the mass storage device in uh, beta flight, which will mount it as a hard drive. And we're also gonna need the black box explorer software, which I already have installed. Okay, so now that we have Black Box Explorer open, we're just gonna go ahead and open up the uh, file here. So we're gonna point to beta flight. Here's the drive that we just mounted, and this was flight number two. So we're gonna go ahead and open up this data. Now you can go ahead and trim uh, the file if you need to, uh, set in and out points on the flight, but since the um, gyro data should match the video since they're coming from the same source. It should be a pretty easy sync here. So we're gonna go ahead and export this data. So let's go ahead and say export CSV. And we're gonna put it into the same file here. Uh, I guess we can call it maybe the same thing just so it looks familiar. Call it BBL for black box logging. Go ahead and save that. And that should be it for black box explorer. So now we can go ahead and open up Gyroflow. Let's go ahead and make that full screen. Uh, this is where we open up our video source file. So right here's our video source from our DVR. And it says the lens profile doesn't match. Uh, I am using the Polar Nano. I don't know that there's a lens profile for that. So we're gonna go ahead and maybe see if the Nebula Nano works and looks like it does. Uh, and then we want to go ahead and open up our motion file, which we just exported, which is this guy right here. And we wanna make sure our frame rate and everything matches here. Now, when I did this flight, I did do a bit of roll maneuver, just back and forth to kind of have a good sync spot. So you can see here, kind of did that back and forth. And you can see that there is that here as well. So, um, you can see they're not matching together right now because that was the gyroscope data trying to copy what I was doing and then here's the video actually when I was actually doing it. So we need to sync those up. So I don't know why there's such an offset here but it looks like the time the flight starts to the time that it actually gets going somewhere around 18, 19 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is say we're gonna give a rough 20 second offset. Uh, with a 10 second search size, we're gonna auto sync and just see if that comes up with anything, if that will auto align. 
And yeah, it looks like it did. You can see here now this gyro data is right over the top of the flight where we were doing that maneuver. And there it is. You can see it totally stabilized it there. You can see those black bars at the top and bottom. Now that is the stabilization actually taking effect. So we can adjust for this. We can get rid of those uh, with the field of view and some other options here, which we'll get into. Now, one thing you can do is turn on a low pass filter and you can say, you know, anything above 50 hertz to go ahead and just chop it off. It'll get rid of it. So it uh, looks like we're pretty much done with the uh, sync information here. So now we're gonna move on to stabilization. Now you can adjust the field of view, so you can, if you zoom out, you can see here's the area where it's cropping. Uh, you can go ahead and zoom in and try and get rid of those bars. Um, you are gonna lose some resolution the more you zoom in. Uh, there are different types of stabilization. There's the 3D uh, style. Uh, I can zoom out, maybe you can see if the profile changes. There's the velocity dampening. Uh, there's the three axis dampening, so it looks at all the axis. You can kind of smooth them individually. There's a, a lock horizon, which is going to kind of just keep everything nice and flat. Uh, and then there's this fix cam, which is, uh, I understand is good for troubleshooting your sync data. So we're going to go ahead. I, I like, let's go ahead and try the velocity dampening. Um, you can see here, if you go to this uh, advanced tab, there's this uh, safe area. And it doesn't always work like it's supposed to. Um, there's different areas for cropping. You can do uh, dynamic cropping. You can do um, uh, static cropping where you just set a field of view and you say, okay, anything here is gonna be static. So we can try that. Let's just play that and see what that looks like. Now that is zoomed in pretty far. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the field of view out a bit and see if we get any black bars. Yeah, I see we do. So. Um, we can try dynamic cropping and change that field of view a little bit. And yeah, you can see it's stabilizing really well already. I can turn this, you can toggle it on and off right here. So this is what it looks like without stabilization. And then you add it and it's just instantly smooth. Um, of course, this is a low resolution DVR footage. Um, so cropping in is going to make it look worse than it started as with the 720 stuff, but um, it looks pretty good. I mean, if, if you're gonna use DVR footage, it's a great way to do it. Now you'll notice there too, you saw some green stuff light up here. So this is a sync point. So you can see these are the points where it's using to try and sync and stabilize the camera footage. And there's different types of uh, stabilization. This calibration method, uh, using this essential matrix, there's also a visual um, features. Uh, I'm just gonna use it with the essential right now. Um, you can add additional low pass filtering here as well on the post production to kind of get rid of some of the um, little vibrations and things that are coming from your quad. Um, here it's saying we have an issue with the field of view. Let's go ahead and set that to one. Now you can go ahead and correct individual if you feel like you're having more on the pitch or the yaw or the roll. Uh, you can stabilize those individual axes. That's why I kind of like this. Uh, dampening per axis. You can kind of adjust exactly what you were doing per flight. Um, there is tons of information on the website about which works best for what type of flying. Um, yeah, so you know, you guys need to do your own research, kind of figure out what works best for the type of flying that you do. Um, you can go ahead and change the output ratio. Um, it, it's automatically locked in the beginning to match whatever you import, but you can change that to upscale or downscale and change your bitrate. I think it tries to copy your original bitrate. Um, you can upscale that if you wanted to, but it's not gonna give you any additional data. So now that uh, we've got everything synced up, we think we're happy with the way that it looks. Um, you know, there is some little uh, jitters and things in here too. We could probably turn on low pass filtering and try and get rid of some of that. Um, you can also adjust the smoothness to try and adjust as well but you know I, this is just kind of an example i want to show you guys uh what you can get just by doing a little bit i mean here here's this here's original and then there's afterward i mean you can tell there's a big difference on that so let's go ahead and export this data and it's going to render it right here you can see it's going to go into the same folder as our source file so that's where it's going to spit it out and it does take a little bit of time i've noticed it's I, i've ran some other footage through here like insta360 and gopro and it definitely takes longer than the insta360 studio and real steady go um but you know it's not that big of a deal all right so as a reminder this is what the original flight video looked like uh right out of my dvr and this is what the video looks like after processing it through the all new gyroflow 1.0.0 
So yeah, it's really great. Like I said, it does zoom in and crop. Now, keep in mind, I am using a nano camera, which isn't the best DVR footage. And this is also a very, very small drone. This is the Flywoo Cinerace 20. And I use this drone on purpose because it is small, it does have some bobbles, and it does get tossed around in the wind quite a bit. Remember, this is a multi-part video series, so part one was about Real Steady Go versus Gyro Flow. I'm also going to do another video to explain how to use this uh, Gyro flight control data on any camera that you might have. Hey, as always, this is Lee from Adventure FPV. If you guys like this video, please drop a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. And we will see you in the next one.